Anyways, um, I have no clue why I'm here, to be honest with you, except Kevin said we want somebody to talk about podcasts. Um, I remember when these guys started DevTO five, is it five, six? Six, six years ago. Um, yeah, and it was all developers, and it was like wild, and um, I have no clue how to code. Um, I'm, not a develop, I'm not a developer, I, I am a marketer, that's how I make my money. Um, so, this might be part of the evening where you can have some more drinks, or <laughs> pop on a call, or whatever. I will <laughs> totally understand that. Um, but hopefully, I will at least entertain you, um, and hopefully you get something out of this. Uh, and I'm not, uh, I, I don't give a lot of presentations. I, I don't give presentations really, uh, but because you know I, I, I like what these guys do for the past uh, number of years, uh, I thought I'd come out. I like sitting down one-on-one -on -one with people, uh, which is why I, I like doing podcasts. So if you guys have any questions at all as we're going through, Let's try to make this as much as a dialogue as possible. So, I've got a full-time gig uh, in marketing. Uh, a lot of people that I know do stuff outside of work. Um, a lot of people, you know, whether they play, you know, in a beer hockey league, or they rep, or they do, uh, you know, ultra marathons, or you know, they're in a, a, a different industry and they, and they code in their spare time. A lot of people got stuff that they do. I don't do any of that. I podcast. That's sort of my one evening a week where my wife knows that's my time. And, and, I, and I go out and, and I do my thing. So what I want to share with you guys this evening in about 20 minutes or so is how I got into it, who I've spoken to, the things that I've learned, uh, over the past couple of years now, um, and yeah, we'll just take it from there. Does that sound good? Yeah? All right, cool. So, you guys know this radio station, right? When you listen to this radio station, what do you get? You get news, traffic, weather. I used to listen to this radio station when it was Top 40 Rock. <laughs> way back, way back in the day. Um, and I loved this radio station. Um, this is their, their yes. top 10 from 1980. Is that, does that say 1980? I used to listen January. to it when it was uh, elevator music. Elevator, that was before this music? That was before top Before rock and roll? Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, The Police, Kenny Rogers, Tom Petty, Eagles Rush. Right, so this is what I, and I loved radio. And I had, I never wanted to be, I, I grew up here in Canada. Um, I never wanted to be a hockey player. I, I hate hockey, to be honest, quite honest with you. It's, it's a ridiculous sport, but that's, but that's next week's talk. <laughs> but I thought radio was so cool. I thought being a DJ would be like the coolest job. Uh, but it was something that, you know, you just dream about. That was for me, that, you, you know, you, you, there, there was no school for radio back there. And then there was this guy. Right before mm. it was the late show, it was late night, and before that, he had a daytime show. Before that, I think it was a weatherman. But when I got married, I had this wallet, and in my wallet, I didn't have a picture of my fiance or my girlfriend. I had a picture of David Letterman <laughs> in my wallet. I loved what he did at 12:30 at night. Um, I just loved watching that show. I remember, you know, growing up in Scarborough. Walking downstairs, and I knew I think it was the seventh step down was the one that creaked. Mm -hmm. And I remember I had to, you know, I put my toe on it to make sure that <laughs> that wasn't the one, or just hop over that. But I remember, you know, they, uh, Carson wasn't my thing, Letterman was. So I used to watch this guy, and I just loved the way he had fun with his guests. And so I think the, the reason I bring this up is that these were, this was my inspiration. Right? I never wanted to have a talk show, but I just, I just loved talking to people. So back in 2009, 2010, I went on Twitter and I just put out a tweet saying, I would love to do a podcast about social media. Is there anybody out there that could help me? Niall at Scorlick responded and said, yes, 
I've got a podcast network, PRN. This is a new logo. He doesn't do podcasts anymore. But back then in 2009, 2010, this was Canada's first podcast network. Out of his basement in Mississauga, so I used to bother, borrow my mom's car on a Sunday afternoon and drive across the 401 into Mississauga. It took me about 45 minutes to get there, 45 minutes to get back, and I stayed there for a couple of hours to record a podcast that lasted for about an hour, hour and a half. <laughs> you guys know this guy? <laughs> yeah. I went back on Twitter and Facebook and I said, I need a name for this show. We're going to talk about social media. So Drew Allery, I think he tweeted back or emailed me or something. He said, why don't you call it SMS? And I go, SMS? It's not about text messaging. He said, no, SMS, social media show. So he's the guy that came up with a name. And a friend of mine made the logo. Social media show. It lasted 27 episodes. I had a bunch of people on. Mm -hmm. um, I have no yeah. clue where the files are anymore. But I did some digging. Uh, Mitch Joel Salt Colt. I don't know if you guys know any yeah. of these names. Yeah. But I had Wave Accounting when they first came out on the show, Microsoft. I had someone from Dell. Um, and all I had to do was book the show, have some show notes, which is basically the notes about the show, and show up. Now that everything, he had all the equipment, he had Skype set up and hooked up, and people would call and once in a while somebody would come into his basement and, and they'd be a guest as well. But I just had so much fun doing that. But I had a problem. I was out in Mississauga. And after 27 or you know, close to around 20th, 20th show, I said, I can't do this anymore. I can't, you know, take a whole Sunday to do that. Right? So after 27 shows, we called it quits. And that's what happened. We blew, we blew it up. And then these two guys are very good <laughs> friends of mine. Top guy is Sammy on Twitter. He's my pal Sammy. And the guy at the bottom, his name is also Kareem, mm -hmm. uh, Kareem Awad. Um, I saw them on Twitter have this conversation, talking about a radio station. And I go, what, you guys are talking about a radio station? You guys are setting up a radio station? What is this all about? So I got in contact with him, and Kareem used to do a podcast way back when, down in, uh, down in the States. Um, but I got in touch, and they're building the studio in downtown Toronto. This is on King Street East at 234 King Street in a bar <laughs> called the Pacific Junction Hotel. It's at, it's at King and Sherbourne. It's not a hotel, it's a bar. But inside the bar, the owner built out a studio. He wanted to do something different. He owns the bar next door called, well, I can't remember the name, it's just an S, Sally's or something like that. Anyways. Um, he wanted to do something different, and it's a really, really cool bar, even if you don't go there to do any recordings, it's really, really neat. But he wanted to do something different, so he started this online radio station called Girth Radio. If you go to girthradio.com, you'll see all the stuff that's happening there. Most of the stuff are, are, are DJs that come in that play into the bar. There's a couple of quote-unquote talk shows, and mine was one of them, and Sam was saying, Kareem, can you bring back your social media show? And I said, no. <laughs> I do that nine to five. I will go crazy doing it after. I used to write a little bit about um, wearables for IT business. He said, why don't you talk about wearables? And I said, I will lose interest after 10 episodes. There's only so many smart watches and smart pieces of clothing that I can go through. Maybe not. And then I went back to him and I said, what if I just talk to interesting people? Just people that are doing shit in Toronto that I find interesting that I can have a conversation with. So what I did is I started calling. He said, sure, go ahead and do it. Top left, that's it's a little bit dark on the screen, but that's Kramer Watt in a, in a ball cap. I think we did this in the winter. It was our first episode. <clears throat> I started calling in favors. I started calling friends and I said, hey, I'm starting podcasting again. Can you come be a guest so that I can start getting used to talking to people one-on-one -on -one and you know hone my interview skills and that sort of thing. So these were the first people that came on my show and I know all of them. Um, you might know some of them, a, lo a lot of them are tech, 
Kerry Morrison in the top there. I think he mm -hmm. spoke at a at a DevTO years ago. So did Mark. Mark yeah. yeah Mark, Mark has spoken. He used to uh, run uh, the social for the Royal Ontario uh, Museum. Uh, Hesse does a lot of stuff in AI. Uh, this dude, his name just slips my mind. Uh, he's got a really cool channel now on Facebook. You might have seen videos. Interesting shit. Has anyone ever seen interesting shit videos? by this guy. Uh, really, really popular. He's getting millions of views uh, on his videos. And just a bunch of... This guy's name is Fareed. Um, he helped years ago, obviously, uh, build the space arm, the original space arm in the space shuttle. So, Canada. That's right. So we talked about a, a lot of stuff and, and a lot of people. Um, and there's Sammy Bottom right. I had him on. So I talked to a bunch of friends so that I can start getting used to talking to people, I can have some content up, and then I can start connecting with people. And I started calling people that I didn't know, and I wouldn't I would call them on the phone, and actually connect with them on Twitter. And I said, hey, I got a podcast, would love to have you on. All right, and I don't know any of these people from before. Morgan Campbell writes for the Toronto Star about business and sport. Spider Jones, I used to listen to this guy, he used to be on 1010 CFRB and the Fan 590. He helped the Muhammad Ali uh, train uh, in boxing. All right, he's got a lot of stories. Grew up in Detroit. Um, the lady on the right, Romana Kasim, some of you might know her, she's, she's a little bit in the tech scene. Um, but I had no clue who she was. She was, she was a referral from a friend of mine. And all I knew about her is that she had a Mendy business. And I said, okay, that's interesting, but I don't know if I can talk to you for an hour. But let's do this. You know, it was a learning experience for me. Um, I had a great conversation with her. And at the time that, I, that this was interviewed, she was the most popular episode. And I have no clue. All right? These were three really interesting. The one on the left I want to talk a little bit about, Sagan Akinsanya. He was on a Toronto Life cover. I saw him there, and I connected with him. This guy's a convicted murderer. He's out now, he's rehabilitated himself. He does a lot of community initiatives. And I just wanted to talk to him about his journey. Uh, the guy in the, in, in the center, ESPN's Arturo Marcano, uh, he, write, he lives here in Toronto, but he writes about baseball uh, to the Spanish audience. And then sometimes you do episodes that you find interesting, you don't know if other people are gonna find interesting, but really, really important people listen to it. So this is Khadija Kaji. I don't know if you guys have seen on Twitter or Facebook or online this initiative called No Fly List Kids. There's a bunch of kids, they're estimating thousands of kids, Canadian citizens, that are on this no fly list. Her son Adam, a couple of years ago, was going to watch the, um, the New Year's Eve game, or New Year's Day game, down, I don't know if it was Boston or Chicago, but down in the States, and he's like seven years old, and he gets flagged because his name matches a potential terrorist's name. And they said enough of this already. And they started this initiative. They've got this website up here. Uh, and I've been told that MPs in the government listened to this to get a better understanding of why she was so pissed and why there is a community of parents that are upset at the government for this. So this was, when I heard about that, I thought this was, you know, this was, you know, I don't have tens of thousands of listeners, but I said, this is important. And that led to, she introduced me, or her husband introduced me to this guy, Brett Wilson. Some of you might have seen him on Dragon's Den years ago, okay? He came on my show the day after the dude on the, the left, Kevin O'Leary, announced that he was running for the conservative leadership. So I got to talk to him about that. I said, and you know, he endorsed it, right? So I, I talked to him about his politics, I talked to him about his life journey, right? He's a cancer survivor as well. So we talked about a lot of great things. And here's a billionaire coming into a bar in Toronto to talk to Kareem, and he lives in Calgary. Talked to a lot of tech people. Some of you may have met Daryl McMullen. Has he spoken here before? Anyone from, I think the name of the company has changed, but Big Gold, he's the CEO of Big Gold, Showdown Joe. Love this guy, I'm a big MMA fan. 
had Sean O'Shea, he was the first guest that came in that other people in the bar bought drinks for him. Sean O'Shea, I don't know if you know him or heard of him, he's on Global TV. Um, he's a consumer advocate, so people that get you know, messed up by big companies, he goes to fight for them. So he got a lot of free beer. <laughs> this was interesting. The guy on the left, Ali Hirji, him and I went to scouts together. I was his scout leader. And you know, we just finished Pride Parade. I had no clue. This guy dated my sister. I had no clue he was gay. I'm on Facebook and I see there's an anniversary and I go, anniversary? And there's a picture of another guy and I go, Ali's gay? I had no clue. What does that mean? I don't know if it means anything about me, but I thought it was interesting to have this conversation with him. I said, man, you're Muslim, you're a soldier, and you're gay? This, this is things that I think people would be interested in. So I spoke with him, fantastic conversation. Richard Petty, former president of Maple Leaf Sports and Entertainment, he's coming to the studio twice. All I did, out, did was reach out to him and said, hey, we'd love to talk to you, not about why you hired so-and-so as a general manager, but want to know about your journey, you know, from you know, Windsor to running the most popular sports team in all of Canada. And then I also talked to my MPP, Salma, which led me to this. This was really weird. So Salma's from Pakistan. She's my MP. Sorry, that's a mis, uh, mislabeled that. She's an MP in my area. She actually used to work for George Smitherman, who came on the week after, mm. who's now running for counselor mm -hmm. again. Uh, he was running for mayor of Toronto. So we talked about his journey in politics, being the first openly gay politician at that time. And then, when I finished interviewing with him, Mackay on the left, who's a producer at Global, came in on the same day. And Mackay's story, while George was in studio, was his grandmother took him to this, um, you know, go to work day with somebody and put him in George Smitherman's car. And George took Mackay out when Mackay was a young kid, you know, on, you know, a tour of, you know, him visiting constituents and stuff. Um, I never knew Mackay, but we had an awesome conversation as well. And I've talked to so many people. Uh, this was one of my favorite ones. So Jim Cregan, Bare Naked Ladies. Hmm. Fantastic conversation. And Desmond Cole here, number 47. Talked about obviously Black Lives Matter. Um, this is before he, he quit uh, writing for the Toronto Star. Um, but I like to have these sorts of conversations with people about things that are important. Obviously, um, you know, I spoke, uh, episode number 52, spoke with a major uh, in the, in the uh, armed forces, uh, Adam Saunders. I did that for Remembrance Day. Jagmeet Singh, before he started running for the NDP mm -hmm. leadership, again, just through Twitter, just connecting with people. Steve Pakin, bottom left, he's written tons of books on Canadian prime ministers. He used to host those debates, mm -hmm. uh, election debates. Mm -hmm. uh, ben Zifkin, CEO, founder of Hubba. Ryan Jackson writes for IT Business. He's the, uh, the editor-in-chief, I believe, Cameron Gordon, PR for Twitter. Crispin Duenas, um, I think he's a silver medalist for Team Canada in archery. Uh, and then my brother-in-law, bottom right, Urban Benzan, recorded this after Trump got elected. And I said, okay, so tell me, black American, tell me about you know being black in the States and then being black in Canada. Tell me your story. Um, and again, at that time, massive numbers on, on that episode. Raina Duras, uh, now with CBC. Bruce uh, Lifsey, you need to read this guy. This guy writes for the National Observer. He'll write for some other places as well. Uh, but he writes really, really important investigative journalism. Uh, Richard Petty again, my buddy Salam Naran, co-founder of Borrowell, another mm. tech startup in Toronto. Zane Belgi uh, worked on uh, Mayor Nenshi's campaign in Calgary. Um, so I, I went to Calgary for a holiday, interviewed him. Went to London for my wife's work, interviewed the guys, two guys in the middle, transplants living in London, Ontario, talking about life in a small, medium-sized city. Spoke with Erica M. I had a crush on her. <laughs> she, was, uh, she was, I think, the first uh, female, female video. DJ on Much Music. Yeah. Yeah. Oh Stacy May, fantastic writer. Uh, Maria Owen, uh, she's an award-winning film producer. Jim Lang used to 
uh, be on uh, the Fan 5 Randy, Mark Evans, some of you might know him. Mark if you could get anybody, anywhere in the world living right now for your podcast, who would you get? Oh, shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Can I two people? Sure. I can't have this one. Two people. So number one would have to be David Lowe. It would have to be. <laughs> but number two, um, and really I would want to talk to David about how, because the, I think the understanding is, is that, you know, he knew that, you know, these people, he, he didn't care about them, they didn't care about him, he was doing them a service, but I just want to know and understand, you know, his whole creative process. But number two, Neil Young. Uh, I'm a huge, I will listen to anything this man puts out. Country stuff, he did this one quote unquote electronic album years ago. Um, I, I love his rock music. Um, and more than that, I love that he stands up and calls bullshit on anything he doesn't give a shit. Um, he'll call bullshit on record labels, he'll call bullshit on fans, he'll call bullshit on corporations, he'll call bull it doesn't, you know, he's, he'll call bullshit on a Democrat or, or a Republican, it doesn't matter to him. Um, and I just love that he stands up for what he believes in, and I'd love to chat with him. So those, those would be my, Which are those? my two people. So Neil Young oh, and Neil Young. David Letter. Yeah. Yes? What's, how much time do you have to prep for one of these sessions? Ah, good. Um, the day, literally the day before, for about an hour or so. Um, and I'll literally go through Wikipedia. Or I'll go through, so Wednesday I'm talking with um, Ryan Dodge, who runs digital at the Royal Ontario Museum. Um, so he's already given me links to check out, and uh, so that's what I'll do. I'll just look at stuff that the ROM is doing in digital, um, and just talk to him about that. Uh, but I'll also talk to him, because I know he moved out of the city, and he's at somewhere in the West End. Um, so we'll talk about, you know, life outside of the big smoke. Um, yeah, hopefully it'll be a good one. And then the studio session is how Studio long? session, I'm in there for an hour, hour and a bit. It takes me 15 minutes to set up. Um, someone else comes in after me, so I don't have to wrap anything up. About an hour we're in there. Uh, and then post, that's where the most of the work is done, that I hate doing. Um, but yeah, it's just taking that recording, making an MP3 file out of it, you know, creating the XML for it, uh, uploading it everywhere and anywhere. Um, but I've got it down to an hour now. As long as I don't, editing. Yeah, as long as I don't mess up. I don't edit. Oh, you don't edit? No, I, I snip off the front and back. Uh, but if, if uh, someone says something, they go, shit, can you take that out? I'll take that out. Yeah. Yes? As long as I think they're interesting <coughs> to me. So if they're interesting mm -hmm. to me, I'll talk to them. Um, yeah, if I want to have a conversation, I'll talk to them. Yeah. Yes? Hardest woman in your podcasting career. Hardest? Hardest. Was with, uh, I think it was with, so two. One was with, anyone watch Sportsnet? Mm. Jackie Redman? Yeah. Guys? Or girls? Yeah. <laughs> She's just hot, I'm sorry. She's so beautiful. And I was so nervous speaking with her. The first thing that came out of my mouth, I think she grew up in Guelph or somewhere out west. Um, and that's how it started and I just felt so <laughs> nervous talking to her. But the second one was with Jay Soul, um, the indigenous gentleman. Uh, because I went to a question so we were talking about, you know, indigenous rights and things like that. And then I went to a question specifically about him, and he called me out on it. <laughs> and I've left it in there. Um, he just said, Kareem, we're, we're talking about big stuff to me. I don't want to talk about me just now. Um, mm. And that was like, shit, okay. And I'm looking through, you know, just you know, notes. To, and I'm, okay, let's talk about this. So that, those two. First one was, because I'm just a guy. Second one was, you know, because I wasn't... I, I don't know if it, I wasn't listening, but you know I didn't read him properly. Um, but that was the hardest, but it was also the most gratifying to me. Yes. I found that a similar podcast interviewing people in Hamilton, and I found ah. that because it's so many different people, it's right, so many different audiences. You find yeah. like audiences form around. Are you from like, Hamilton? Uh, right, well, like Burlington, but I was yeah. in Hamilton for years and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's, have you found like building an audience? Because it's not like you're interviewing people in tech. Only, mm -hmm. or whatever, right? Like, so building the yeah. listeners, you find it's just episode to episode kind of thing? Yeah, it is. And um, I don't subscribe to anything that, you know, gives me proper uh, metrics. Yeah. You know, I'll just go into the back end of my website, the host, and I'll, and I'll just see numbers there. 
I have no clue what they, you know, I have no clue who they are. I don't know how long they listen for. No, I, I, I know, I know, that, yeah, Richard Petty suggested to me after the second time to make them short, to make snippets of them. Number one, I don't have time to do that. Number two, I listen to long podcasts. Um, and this is not my job, right? It's a fun thing that I love to do. And so that's it. <laughs> yeah. So what are your, some of your favorite podcasts to listen to? Um, WTF, Mark Marin. Um, I'm just pu I'm pulling up my, my thing now, so I, so I don't forget. There's there's some quote unquote newer ones. So let me go through stuff that's not obvious. Um, so there is what there was one. It's it's over. It was it was called Cosby Unravel. So they started talking about the Cosby trial before it started. So they went back to uh, to where he grew up and, and started talking to people. I thought that was interesting. This one was really really hard to listen to. Seventy four seconds. Um, Philando Castile, I can't remember what city he was in, but he was gunned down. Yes. He was gunned down by uh, an officer mm -hmm. uh, while his girlfriend was in the car yeah. and the girlfriend's daughter was in the back seat. Yeah. Trevor Noah's covenant. The cop was just acquitted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I listened to that podcast. That was powerful. Um, I listened to mine. <laughs> There's one on Prince. Prince, dig if you will, the podcast. That's really, really cool. I love Prince. <laughs> nice. Uh, what, season one came out of this, but I haven't heard season two, Heavyweight. Uh, it's, on, it's on the Gimlet uh, Network. Um, Jonathan, uh, I can't remember his last name, but he used to do work with CBC um, and, and some other places as well. Great storyteller. Uh, Revisionist History, that's the Malcolm Gladwell one. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with audio because of Malcolm Gladwell. His voice was just amazing to me. Uh, song Exploder, uh, that's where they dissect songs and how it was made, and the artist talks about that. That's really, really cool. Um, and, you know, the, the obvious ones like WTF, This American Life, and so on. But, yeah, those are some of the other ones that not a lot of people. What was that music uh, Song Exploder. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah it's really cool. They, there was actually like a podcast I mean, festival one day, on uh, and the guy who did that came up. And, and uh, uh, did an episode. Yeah. Yes. Last so, question. Last question. How did you choose? I guess what platform to do your videos on? Like, do you upload them onto your own website, or do you use YouTube uh, and then yeah. embed them? Like, how did you decide? Yeah. So it's all audio. I okay. take photos. That's sure. why you can see the photos. I take photos of most of the people. Sometimes I forget and I just go to Google. Um, because there's so many options. How, there's so many options. So I, do, so I do two things. The first thing that I do is it has to go into Girth Radio. They host me. They don't chart. I pay nothing for my studio. Uh, and when mm -hmm. I go there, I don't even drink alcohol, but I get free drinks and food. <laughs> so they, uh, so they, they stock up on Diet Cokes for me. Um, so it goes on Girth Radio. That's the original place it stays. But then I also publish it all over the place. So you can find it on iTunes, on Stitcher, on Google, and, and everywhere else. And really all I have to do is, is register on a bunch of these, but create one file. And whenever I update that file, um, it's like an RSS feed that just automatically goes out. Okay. Yeah. And is that the same 234 King place? 234 King Streeties. Betty's. Betty's is the one next door. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. You're welcome. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you.